the culture of honor. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my pen the tongue, I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of man. Father, after now, let the purpose for sending your word be fulfilled. Father, let us walk according to your counsel. Let us change according to your word. Let us be transformed by the power of the living word. Thank you because you are good. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Have your seat in God's presence, people of God. All right, let me remind your neighbor what the title of the message is. The culture of honor. So the first thing you do is to take salmon notes. Culture. Take salmon notes. Take pen out. Put it on your phone. But then take salmon notes. Praise God. Some people look at me and say, you know, I'll remember. What did you say last week? And then you begin to hear, M, M, it was easy, M, M. All right. So let's go to the word of the Lord, the culture of honor. You see, as I began this message, I'd like to share with you something God shared with me when I was called to ministry. God told me, and he said to me, never, never preach any message because I share the revelation with you. He said to me, first of all, ask for an experience concerning it before you begin to preach it. So because of that, I had revelation about relationship, about marriage, but because I was not married, it was not something I've experienced, I never preached it. And so I've come to a point with God that I do not just ask God for his power so that he can move in his power. I want him first of all to move in his power in my life because I'm like David. David looked at Saul and told him, he said, I cannot go to battle with your weapon and with your hammer. He said, why? Because I've not tested it. So with God, I always want to test something before I share it with you. Because I want to be sure that it works. And so I want to share a life principle with you. Something I work with. Something that I've tested and I know that it works. And if you work it, I know you will find results there. So let's get Isaiah 23 and verse 5 in the message translation. If my feedbacks can be better, I think it will be nice. My feedback, I'm not hearing myself well. Isaiah 23 and verse 5. I hope you can hear me. Clearly. All right. That's the dummy sound does to you. All right. Sorry. Isaiah 25 verse 6. I was the one. Isaiah 25 and verse 6. How many of you like food? <laughs> now, I, I just love scriptures. Because scripture is complete. Let's read this. Let me read this for you. See, but here on this mountain, God of the angel armies will throw a feast for all the people of the world. <laughs> a feast of the finest foods. A feast with vintage wines. A feast of seven courses. A feast lavish with gourmet desserts. Gourmet desserts. The tea is silent. That's French. Seven course meals. Even when you went to a party and they promised you three course meals, you know they didn't give you three. God said seven course meals. All right. Can we see very quickly Psalms? Very popular scripture. 23 and verse 5. Psalms 23 and verse 5. Psalms 23, 5 in the message translation. And the word of the Lord says, 23, 5. When they are still looking for it, let me read it for you. You serve me, What? You want to die? <laughs> you serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. That means you are getting, you are going to be ashamed. My cup brims with blessings. So Isaiah said, seven course meal. David said, six course dinner. Listen, literal translation, therefore, is that God will satisfy you with food. Literal translation, therefore, is for you to say, where is God's restaurant? That I may not miss out, even of this meal. Where will we get served? You might ask the question. But figuratively and deductively, God was saying, I will make you full. I will make you fruitful. I will make you satisfied. God was saying on my table, when you dine with me, I'm going to make you satisfied. 
I'm going to make you full. I'm going to make you filled and fruitful. And you will have everything you need. The Jews understand this. And therefore, anytime they read Psalm 23 and verse 5, they say, God gives me all that I need to be respected and victorious in the face of my enemies. So when we say, God, we give you seven cause means. Against you is your enemy. That means they will be seated in front of you. But God has already equip you with all you need to be respected by them and to be victorious in their sight. Do you understand that? When your enemies come, because that guy is your boss and you are afraid of him and so you are respectful and you are afraid. But because someone has just called you for a multinational job, you don't, you don't respect the guy anymore. He's your enemy, but you just look at him. Why? Because there is a course. There is a several course dinner. A six course dinner that God has prepared before you. So though you are being challenged because you have an understanding that on this table there is seven cost me for me. Praise God. So today I want to speak to the literal meaning of this verse. I want to draw out literal wisdom from that, word, from that which the Lord has done. God has a table and you can see that his table are not full of shawarma alone. I mean seven course. So I don't care what you want, what you need. Some of you are saying, you know what, I, I, I'm not sure I will ever be satisfied. I'm trying to tell you that on God's table, there is everything you will ever need. But the gist is, how do you assess God's table? What is the nature of the character of people that can be on the table with God? So God has prepared a table. He said for all the people of the world. But no, it's not everyone that has a right to the table of the prince of peace. To the table of the king of kings. There is a right conduct. You see, the kingdom of God operates by principles. And I told myself when I became a great believer that I was going to learn the principles and walk the principles because principles always work. Do you understand that? You see, if you want to walk with God, you need to just learn certain principles. It's called digging wells. When Jacob dig the wells that his father had dug, when he dug them, he found water also. Why? Because they are lasting principles. Therefore, if you find a well that someone is taking from and you dig that well also, you also find water there. So there are wells. They are called principles. The word called them principles. The scripture called them wells. So I found out that there are certain wells that if you and I will dig, we will find prosperity there. And that's what I want to share with you. Listen, the kingdom operates by principles. If you are not born a king in Britain and you are not born into the royal family, you, if you are called to the queen's presence to eat with the queen, they are always going to teach you certain etiquettes. You, they are going to teach you certain behavioral things, uh, certain attitudes. What are the things that are allowed and what are the things that are not allowed? Why? Because there is a comportment that is needed before the king. There is a thing that is required if you are going to sit down in the banquet of royalty. And tonight I want you to understand that if you are going to also eat in the banquet of the supernatural, if you are going to eat to the banquet of royalty himself, God himself, whose domain has no hand, uh, then there are certain character, attitude, and principle that you and I must put in place. The culture of honor. This world, this kingdom operates by culture. And sociologists told us that culture is the way of life. So, I am trying to tell you that for you to be allowed to enter into the kingdom of God to eat at his table, there is a culture you must have. It's called the culture of honor. Look at your neighbor and say, the culture of honor. The way, the lifestyle of honor. That's what we call the culture of honor. The lifestyle of honor. Bible, look at the scripture we read. God said, I, I had promised Saul the kingdom. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. He said, I've not only promised him. I've also promised his lineage. <laughs> he said, but I, I, I'm not going to do this anymore. Why? He said, fight with me. God was saying, it's impossible. I can't allow you to dine with me. I can't allow you to be in my banquet. I can't allow you to sit here. Why? He said, because those who honor me will I honor. So why was Paul sent out of the presence of the king? Why was he not allowed to stay in the banquet hall? Because he did not honor the king. A life of dishonor can get you into the backyard from the royal table. The kingdom is a kingdom of grace, but there are protocols to be observed. You are not allowed to hit with dignitaries because you desire it. You must have certain qualities. And it's called honor. 
We are almost becoming an honorless generation. This is the reason many people are not moving up. This is the reason many people are not prospering the way they should prosper. This is the reason why many people's foolishness continue the way it is. Why? Because God is a God of honor. And no dishonorable person can eat at his table. How many of us want to eat at God's table? Okay, last week you guys were on fire. <laughs> I'm saying some truth now. There are principles. Don't worry. Let's just dig wells together. It's not easy to dig well. When you're digging well, it's strange. It's strenuous. It's difficult. It's a task. And that's what we want to do today. So how do I define honor? What is honor? The word defines honor in many ways. But we define it as a king says Keen sense of ethical conduct. Honor is a keen sense of ethical conduct. Honor is often used to refer to one's word being guaranteed. A keen sense of ethical conduct. That's what honor is. A keen sense of ethical conduct. It is said that his word is guaranteed. That's honor. When one word is guaranteed. You've heard people say this. I swear by my honor. When they say a thing. They say, I swear by my honor. What they are saying is, I swear by everything that is me. I swear by myself. It is called personal integrity. Honesty and showing respect to others. That's what honor is. Honor is personal integrity. When they say, I swear by my honor, they are saying, I swear by my personal integrity. I swear by my honesty. I swear because I also show respect to other people. That's what it means. We are a kingdom that runs on integrity. We are a kingdom that runs on showing esteem to people. We are a kingdom that runs on honesty. Again, honor has to do with recognizing what a person is worth and celebrating who they are and what they have accomplished and making room for them according to the God-given honor upon their life. It has to do with recognizing a person's worth, celebrating who they are and what they have accomplished. Are making room for them according to the God given honor they deserve. <laughs> what they have accomplished. You know, you may not like the president of Nigeria. Hello? Are there people here who do know that maybe they don't like the guy? Or the old, okay, the grandpa. <laughs> Many people don't like him. But when he comes into this place, it's dishonorable for you to sit down. Whether you like him or not. Why? Because that is not what his office deserves. It's not the person, it's the office. It's what he has accomplished. Therefore, when Reverend George comes to preach at the Energized Church and you see people stand up to honor him, some, of, some people will sit down and say, what? Why? Why? They are getting angry. Don't be angry. It's what he has accomplished. It is giving them room according to the God-given honor they deserve. It means, listen, the word honor means to refer it means to venerate. That's where you get the word reverend from. You hear reverend minister. It's from the word honor. When you hear people say venerable, they are saying this is an honorable person. That's where judges, lawyers come to court and they said, my Lord, my honor. They, you see, it's, they, they honor them. Why? Because that's what their office deserve. In Hebrew, that word honor is the word kabod. K-A-B-O-D. And that is the same word we use for glory. That's the same word glory in Hebrew. In fact, the Hebrew call it kabod kabod, which means the worthiness of God's presence. That's what that word means. It means glory. That's what the word kabod means. And that same word honor in the Old Testament was translated as kabod, which means honor also represents glory. And in Greek, what does the word honor mean? It means time. In case you want to write it, just write time. That's what it means. Time. That's the way to write it. Time. But it's not called time. It's called time. That's what the word Greek is. And the Greek tells us it's a person who deserves glory. A person who deserves to be highly esteemed. That's what that word honor means. As Christians, therefore, we need to be the highest symbol of integrity in the world. We need to be truthful. We need to be honest. It's time to go back to the source of honor, who himself is God, and learn how to live an honorable life. Though we live in the midst of a dishonorable, we live in an, a, an honorless generation. You know there's a phone called Honor 1, Honor 2. <laughs> Why we? Honor, Honor. <laughs> Though we live in an honorless generation, 
We can be a source of light in the world. How can you do that? By keeping your word. By having a high sense of integrity. Ah, man of God. We have a conference. Are you going to come? BFM. Ha. Just tell those guys, are they going to come? And they say, <laughs> let us see what the Lord will do. That's what some of you say. That's what you say. That's lying. You know you will not come. Some of them will say, I will see whether I can make it. They say, I'm not making a commitment. They are lying. They are using scope. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your nay be nay. In the kingdom of God, there, are, there is nothing called, hey, I was scoping him. God does not have scope with him. He has lies with him. So what you define as scope is a lie because he knows your heart. I'll tell you five things about honor. Number one, it is highly rewarding to be honorable. God loves and encourages and rewards persons of honor. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. He said, those who honor me, I will honor. First Chronicles chapter 17 verse 18. David said, what have I done that you have honored me this much? So God rewards people who honor him with honor. And what did David do? He decided he was going to live an honorable life. Though the king was not honorable. So I'm not going to kill the king. I'm not going to kill someone who is anointed. I'm not going to use my mouth to smite him. I'm not going to do anything and say anything against him. And God reward him with honor. I tell people, if God will honor you, you have no problem again in the world. Solomon was honored. Second Chronicles chapter 1 verse 12. He, he did not ask for anything. And God said, because you did not, I'm going to give you honor. So God rewards honorable people with honor. When a man acts honorably, God rewards him with honor. Number two, you don't get to feast with God if you do not honor him. Can I say that to someone here? You do not get to feast with God if you do not honor him. Some of us are so selfish, my God. It's only you, I, and me, the three God you worship. Never have a place for God. What sustains you with God is the life you live. Honor is not something we say. It is the way we act. Number three, honor stems from the heart. It is therefore a heart matter. Act of honor flows from a heart of honor. Do you understand that? Act of honor flows from a heart of honor. If you don't honor someone, you will not act that way. I am afraid of dishonorable people because most times it's a head issue, not a heart issue. Those who are close to me know I say that a lot. You see, you have to find a difference between the heart and the head. When someone has a head issue, that's not a problem. That's a problem of knowledge. You can always fix that. That's ignorance. But when someone has an heart issue, there's nothing you can do about that. And most problems of dishonorable people is an heart problem. Number four, only honorable persons have a place at God's feasts. You cannot fully access God's blessing. That looks like number one, right? Like number two. You cannot fully access God's blessings if you do not live a life of honor. Number five. A wise man is known by his life of honor. The Bible says honor is not fitting for a fool. Proverbs 28 and verse 6. <laughs> Listen, it is the life you live that will tell people whether you are honorable. Number six, I want to tell you number 16. I'm going very fast today because I'm going somewhere. <laughs> A wise man is known by his life of what? Life of honor. Number six, I want you to know that there is something called transactional or situational honor. That's what some people have. John 5, 54. Jesus said, you people honor each other. <laughs> he was looking at the Pharisees. You know, people honor themselves. I have a friend in ministry, so I call him to come and preach for me, so that when he's doing his conference, he can also call me to preach for him. There are transactional honor. <laughs> people who honor me because of the anointing. I know. I know. I don't fool myself. <laughs> I want to go equally. So where does I lay your hand? Nothing. Transactional honor. You need to be wise. <laughs> Search people through the spirit. 
so that people are not just getting things from you. It's transactional. You say, let me buy him something on his birthday so that he can buy me something on my birthday. Transactional honor. That's not the kind of honor we are preaching here. Number seven, honor can be followed and taught. And that's what we're trying to do here. And that's why I call it the culture of honor. We must be a people who have a culture, a lifestyle of honoring people. Honoring the church, honoring people. Because there are ten people God says in the word of God that is written in the scriptures that you must honor. Your lifestyle of honor must touch these ten people. These ten people. And that's what I want to talk about. And after that, we are free to go home. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Can I have some energy? Glory to God. Amen. Thank you. Man of God. God bless you. Encourage me. Because some of them are looking. This man will kill us today. You know, last week you move. Today is a lifestyle. It's a culture. It's a culture. And we must learn this culture. Because that is why many people become blessed and they don't stay in the blessing. Because they are dishonorable. So God chased them out. Why? Said, Those who honor me, I will honor. So his honor, he leaves, he takes his honor away from their life like he took it away from the life of Saul. And Saul became a raging mad king. Though he was a king, he was mad. Every time I think about Saul, I look at him and I say, this, but this guy must, the demon must be a bad demon. You are king and you are chasing one guy around. You left the kingdom war, kingdom principle, kingdom business and you are chasing one boy with his ragged army. And the guy even had an opportunity to kill you, had an opportunity to kill you, he did not. At that time, sense did not fall on you. May you have sense in Jesus' name. The life of honor must be reflected in ten ways. Number one, honor God. Are you writing these principles down? This is a well you must dog for yourself. Number one, honor God. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Bible talked about honoring God. 4 Samuel 2 13. Those who honor me, I will honor. Honor is God's system. It is his way. His being and his doing. And he expects it to be our way also. The first place we are called to direct our honor to is to God. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Says he is worthy to receive honor glory and praise is worthy to receive it without complete and genuine honor to god it will be impossible to honor anyone else so you see honor starts with god just like wisdom starts with the fear of god honor starts with god you cannot honor any being on earth where you do not honor god do you understand that so your honor force the primary place of honor when you see someone who dishonors god and you now say, eh, he's not faithful to his wife. I tell people, what do you expect? When someone does not know God, and you say he's, he has five girlfriends, he's trying. He should have like 25. Well, he cannot live a life of honor because he does not know God. So the first thing is to submit your life to God. That's why I love the song we sang. He has to run your life. You can't give your will to someone you do not honor. <laughs> you do not respect. Someone says, can I drive you? I say, don't worry. Stay. Let me drive. Why? I do not honor my life with him. I can't. Some people think they honor God because they acknowledge he exists or because they come to church. Jack your neighbor and say, it's not enough. Jack the person. Jack the person. Because you came to church or because you are a church goer does not make you a believer. You might even speak Chinese or speak what I call Christianese. It doesn't mean you are a believer. You know there are Christianese language? It is well. God bless you. God is faithful. <laughs> Those are Christianese. I've seen Muslims who speak Christianese. You greet and say, it is well. I, I celebrate you, sir. It's all those languages, you can learn it. It does not mean you honor God. I've seen people when we say, how are you doing? It is where, sir. And they are coming from a boy's house. They have just had sex. And he says it is where. What is where? You 
you can speak the language, it doesn't mean you honor God with a lifestyle. Honor cannot be faked. You can sense it. It only comes from the heart. It stems from the heart. How do you know honor God? God's word is clear. Three ways. Number one, honor God in your finances. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of your increase. It's clear. Don't think pastors are collecting money because they just want to collect money. It is the way to honor God. It's in the Bible. You can't respect and honor the word of God when it comes to your healing and not honor it when it comes to giving. He gave. He loves you and he gave. When you obey God by tithing and giving back to him, what is this? You absolutely demolish every plan of devil in your life. Number two, you honor God in what you say. Those who know me and are close to me know I can slap you if you say an F word around me. And you know all of you, some of you are just like niggers and you just think it's trendy and it's okay to just speak such lousy languages. But it's not okay. We are known in Israel by our words. We are not only Christians and then we speak the words other people speak. How do you know an Israelite? He speaks Jew. He's a Jew, so he speaks their language. How do you know a Yoruba man? He speaks Yoruba. How do you know a Christian? By his words. But when, when a Christian will say, fuck you. I can't even understand that. How can you bring that thing out of your mouth? Little one that Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That tells me who you are. You are not honoring God. Because people look at you and say, and, and she calls herself a Christian. You are not honoring God. You think you are being trendy, you are being a fool. Praise God. Come on, praise God after it. That's why when you say you are being a fool, you say praise God. Coarse language, inappropriate joking. Nonsense things you say. Number three, you honor God in what you do. 1421 of the book of John. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. This is how you behave day in, day out. When you deal with your family, when you are in public place, how do you act? How you comport yourself? What you say, it tells me you honor God. How you dress? Some ladies, some people say, when you bend down, do like this. Some people don't need to bend down. What are they bending down for? So when you bend down, cover it. What are you bending down for? What is this? What are you doing? You are a temple of the Holy Ghost. He slays the inside that bloody. You are slaying away. Why is you are chasing me away? You think your body is yours? What did you do to make your body? Oh, so you are big. You have rotunda. You have a body. Praise God. But what did you do to have that body? What did you do to have that complexion? Oh my, I have, I have flowing hair. What did you do to have that flowing hair? Some people are bad. Their hair is going back. They have tried all the wonders of hair cream and it is not coming back. It's not yours. Am I speaking to someone today? You say, I don't want us to laugh away the lesson. Number one, you must honor God. And don't just say, Agrando Bieke. Stop that nonsense. There are angels' words. And that tells you that even demonic angels who came down from heaven speak those to us sometimes. Speaking in tongues is not a certificate that you make heaven. Live a life. Number two, honor your parents. You know this is why many people fight me. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land that your Lord God has given you. It's clear. The command to honor parents may seem easy to some of us. But I understand that for some people it is not easy. Depending on the kind of experience you had and the kind of parents you have. But I am not saying all parents are deserving of honor. Is that what you are saying? No. No, no, never. But I'm saying I'm not interested in your feelings. I'm telling you what God says. I have sto- I've had stories of cruel parents. I've been pastoring for a while. See, I've had stories. Stories when I'll be telling them, forgive now. You have to forgive. And I am feeling we should go and kill the man. So my head is saying something else, but my mind is saying something else. My heart is telling them something different. 
How can you tell of a, a lady that was raped from 9 to 12, from 9 to 14 by her father consistently? And I was still looking at the girl. Say, so you forgive. My head was saying, let's go and buy a gun. Say, so you forgive. We can feel the infirmities. But the scripture says, honor your father and your mother. It didn't put an adjective there. I don't think God does not know how to use adjective. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God used an adjective. He said, when you, this book of the Lord does not depart from your house, mouth, and you do according to that which is there in, he said, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good sources. That's an adjective. The good there is qualifying the kind of sources you will have. So God can as well say you should honor good fathers and mothers. But God said, honor fathers and mothers. Whether they are bad or they are good, they are going to be honored by Christians. Because you see, sometimes when you get to the depth of God's love, you will pity them and know that it's them ones that's doing that to them, not them. Some of you have parents that are not born again. What do you expect from them? No, I'm asking you, what do you expect? He's not sending you money, eh? What would the devil do before? They are under his governance. Somebody said, the way my mother talks to me. Uh -uh. You have a mother... Some have not seen their mother. He said, it's better if she died. I said, if she dies, you will cry. Ask them. Some of them have cried. Listen, it does not matter the kind of mother you have. God says, honor them. Tell your neighbor, honor your father. I don't care the kind of life he lives. Honor him. You see, you know one thing I've discovered? We cannot determine how people treat us, but we can choose our reaction. Choose to be a person of honor. Even if you cannot do or have relationship with your parents, you can choose not to think or speak evil concerning them. Forgive them for any offenses. And most importantly, pray for them. Never mock them, never mock their abilities. Some of you say, in your heart, say, that's why we are poor. You can't see daddy's decision making. Your own will soon come. You will soon become a father. You see how easy it is. <laughs> you know, I, I tell people, I read my scriptures and I saw the secret of long life there. Without prayer. I saw the secret of long life. Honor your father and your mother and your days shall be long. So what I intend to do, because I intend to live long, is I intend to honor my father and my mother. Say finish. And I will now wait for the devil in hell or on earth or under the house that can snuff life out of me when the word of the Lord did not say so. Many people's life and destiny have been cut short because they are dishonoring their parents. I know you will go quiet now. Some of you will pick calls. They say, he's calling me, he's calling me too much. He's calling me too much. Some of you don't like them because they are poor. Some of you are lying. You will live in Ijushaga. You are telling people you say Aleki. You are dishonoring them. And you know, some of you know you have never shown anybody your mom's picture. You don't have it on your phone because you are not proud of her. Iyala Telegu see is okay. Some people too cooperative to send you to school. And you go to school, you are using. Brazilian hair, because you find a boy who bought it for you. But you will never talk about your mother. Some of you are very dishonorable. God said, I should tell you. So I'm telling you now. Number three, honor your spouse. Don't forget I said, honor your spouse. So write it down. I know some of you are not married. <laughs> the most of us are not married, so let's just write it down. The Bible says, husbands, honor, give honor to the wife. Let the wife also respect her husband. Do you show honor to your husband or to your spouse? Honor doesn't belittle or criticize. Honor builds up. It does not tear down. It means to be the first cheerleader. Honor does not just ask, submit, 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 submit. And when the Bible talks about weaker vessel, dumb people don't think they are saying it is weak. She's weak. Don't be dumb. When they say we cover, so when the Bible talks about that, the Bible is talking about the ornament. Listen, when you buy diamond or you buy gold in the market, you don't take that gold and use it to be washing clothes. 
You honor the gold. You keep it because it is weak, but it is precious. It is diamond. It is precious. So you keep it and you keep it as a pair. And stop saying there is no woman or not who is honored and valued who will not submit. Evil feminists submit when they see honor. And when the Bible says that, it's not saying you are the master over them. Even look at yourself in the mirror. Can you be a master over anything? You look at the way you are doing your life. So, so, so when the Bible says it gives you that position, it's because in a team there must be a leader. You see, some of us don't understand these things. They are simple, simple details. Simple, simple details. Since the way she's talking to me, who are you? The last time I checked, you were made from clay. Listen, there are certain things we say that are just irritating. If you honor your woman, your woman will honor you. Simple as ABC. When you criticize the way she dress, she will also criticize the way you dress. Because you also put orange on a blue trouser. Number four, honor those who are older. The Bible says in Leviticus 19.32, are you writing these principles down? Number four, these are wells. Honor those who are older. You know, I know that you people are British and you don't have respect. So when you see others, say, good day, sir. <laughs> you don't even put a good day. And because you walk in a place now, they say you can call everybody by their first name. Yabo, Yabo, Tunde, Tunde. So you come to church, I say, Tunde, Tunde. And they are answering you, but they are hungry in their mind. 1932, show respect to the aged. Honor the presence of an elder. Fear your God, I am God. There has been an alarming decline of respect for older people in our generation. Entire generations have determined that they know it all. They know it all. So you can go on Facebook and labas the fathers of faith and say, well, does not know anything. What have you done in your life? Who have you saved in your life? Because you got small revelation on Ephesians 2 and you didn't even understand the Greek, you are saying rubbish. So you look at fathers in the faith, you look at elderly people and you say nonsense about them. We are a church of honor. If a pastor is down the road, if you don't join his church, don't talk bad about him. It's not your business. Because it's not a remite or it's not a member of an entire church. It does not mean he's a fool. He has a message from God. Honor it. Thou shalt not talk about the anointed of God. Because the gift and calling of God are without repentance. But we say anything. You, they open their mouth like this. One stupid boy in this church, in this church, was talking about Geo. In this church, I put it on Facebook. You know yourself, oh. Do it again next time I will. What kind of nonsense is that? You're talking about body body like that and fear did not catch you. In the name of freedom, the man says, sack the secretary. What is your business? Is it your secretary? Is it your secretary or sister? Do you have all the details? Do you know how the secretary dress? You don't have all the details and you are running commentary. Is it not a fool? The scripture says, who judge on a matter without hearing it all? You see that this is a foolish generation. See daily ministry. Boys with a little revelation. Even judge is coming. They, they, they cannot stand up. Say, I'm a pastor. I'm an apostle. Nonsense apostle. Apostle, apostle without churches. Do you know what it means to be an apostle? Are you saints? Are you an apostolos? Just give yourself titles. We know pastors who don't know who ordained them. I've been in ministry for years. I have had friends who are anointed from their mother's womb, like Reverend K. We say. What does it mean to expect older people in church? You people work with your perfume. 
And the things you put on your head, mascaras and all those things you don't sleep with. Because God bless your eyes, you sleep like that in this Nigerian heat, you will be baked before the morning. And you sleep. And you are walking. And an elderly person is carrying back and sues you. And with your high heel. That's making you proud. Fake things. It's not even original. Worse of all, some of you bought it at post office. And somebody's walking. table manners. I am not going to shake this table. I'm going to break it. And you see an elderly man carrying something. You never offer to even carry it. That was not how we were brought up. That was not how the faith was. You offer to carry Bible. They will tell you no. You are feeling sad. No respect. Nothing. See elderly people. Look at you. That is why God's on. You see, these are proofs. Where else? You need to dig. Look at your neighbor and say, I have to change. You need to be patient with elderly people. You don't go on criticizing everybody because of this small, stupid tab you are carrying around that shows you Google. It's not that you are that wise. <laughs> How can you look at your mom? You look at your dad the way some of you talk to them. Someone was talking to the mom in my presence. I felt like just falling and just dying. What is the essence of this madness? Why? She's a student of uni learning. We don't know whether she will graduate. You know, these things are not sure. They are not sure. When you graduate, you are not sure you'll get a job. And you are still ruining your life. Because the things that can help those things to come easily for you, you are not doing them. Honor. Number five. Honor your boss. Time has gone, Jesus. Honor your boss. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.18, that's why I'm giving you scriptures. 1 Peter 2, 18. He says, Servant, be submissive to your masters, not only to the good and to the gentle, but also to the ash. Look at the new message translation. He said, not just to good masters, but also to bad ones. Someone said, you don't understand. My body is wicked. Uh-huh. Before, till the end of the world, wicked bosses will be at, at work. You don't react. You are not a thermostat. You are the one who determines what happened. How you respond. You, like I said to you, you can't determine what people do, but you can determine how you respond. First Peter, First Peter 2 18, Peter said the same thing. He said, All who are under the yoke as slaves are to regard their own masters as worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and our doctrine will not be spoken against. First Peter 2 18. The name of our God has been spoken against because you have turned it to a theater of war in your office. See, ah, he called himself a Christian. No, she called herself a Christian. See the way she's talking. See the doctrines we preach. Come to disrepute because of you. Some of you, you if, if we want to kiss some people now, you see, like let us go to their schools or their place of work and they will be the ones to do the preaching who will just follow them and sing. Some of you are just smiling. You are quaking on your chair as you are smiling. You know that we should not try that. Too. Because they will know that you are just making noise. We are not supposed to just refer people. We are supposed to refer those who are our bosses. And then number seven, number six, honor church leaders. Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. It does not say when they are older than you or when they are younger than you. 
honor them in the lost work. This is a generation. I'll see old men, old women talking to Reverend George, and they will kneel down. Kneel down. Old women, 60 something year old, kneel down. Those who are not even 20 or 22, 25, they can even go and enter his mouth like this. Because he gave you permission and gave you access to his life uh, does not mean he should be dishonored. You can kneel and say, please stand. But you see, honor is not even what you do. It's not kneeling alone. I've seen people who call me brother and see in fact that I'm foolish. This generation, the amount. Sometimes you get home and go and process. Kill us. What about that? Look at me here. I'm telling you. And they say, ah, PFM, PFM. They will even say fast party. And they say, ah. In fact, when you did it, I was surprised. I was surprised. I didn't expect it from you. It was so stupid. I was not expecting it from you. He didn't call him stupid. He didn't. He didn't. So, it takes ruminating to now discover that she called her stupid. He called him stupid. They will subject you to deep thinking in dishonor. This is an area that needs serious work. Listen, I, I will say it again. It is never acceptable to criticize, gossip, or make cutting remarks about a pastor. Never. A minister, a church leader, as this is an act of direct disobedience. The scripture above continues to... Tr- uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.12 And then we'll read verse 13. It says, They walk out among you and warn you against all that is wrong. Think highly of them and give them your all hearted love because they are straining to help you. The Bible never promised that pastors and leaders will be perfect. Even when Jesus was called good. He said, I'm not good. Only God is good. So don't expect me to always call you on your birthday. And because I did not call you, I'm a bad person. Or because I, 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 you greeted me, I did not answer you. I'm a foolish person. The weight I carry, if you carry it, you will not wake up. I'm telling you. Do you know why it means to be a pastor? Some people, some idiots write some things on Facebook teaching pastors how to do the work of a pastor. Do it for one month. If you don't resign, I'm not desire. Those of us who are inside want to run out. What are you talking about? When you share my problem with me, your problem with me, who do I share my own with? I'm asking you, oh, you think I don't have? What if we come here on Sunday and I say, God did not give me a message to preach? What will you do? You know you can call office and say you are sick. Can I call that I'm sick? There's no church. Now, I'm telling you, this, uh, even that old pastor at home that you call an orthodox pastor, you need to honor him. Some of you. It's Pentecostal that has revelation. <laughs> I should reduce it. I mean. <laughs> the only one who is perfect is God. I love, I was sharing with a pastor in this town. And he was saying, he said, I told my church members, there are some generals, if you enter the room and you find them naked with a woman, you should run outside. And then when they see, you say, Kilo I I saw daddy. And daddy was praying. And then you go. If the pastor tells you, the, pa- the man will come and say, what did you see? I saw you praying. If God wakes you up in the middle of the night, say, what did you see? I saw him praying. That is honor. It is not in your mouth. Listen, one of my mentors used to say this. He said, no man has called you, God has not called you to be an umpire in the race you are supposed to run. He has not called you to be what? An umpire in a race you are supposed to be running. So, so that's what some of us do. Umpire. That church. <laughs> You are going there. That man, uh, he does not have anything to say. Oh, no. I tell people, even when generals abuse themselves on the pulpit. I remember one time, Baba was fighting somebody. Somebody came and met me and said, eh, eh, That man did what is wrong. I said, What he did was wrong. It does not wrong. It's not my business. Those people are not my mates. I should not talk. When they stop fighting now, I will not be there. I'm not saying anything. Leave me alone. It's the truth. 
it's not my mate. Toba shake me for me by with my corn. There are some people where they will still cost me now. I know where I will be going to. So when you are built about the way, I don't know who wants to pray for you on this earth. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. See, I, there are some, if you abuse me, I don't even judge is there. I'm telling you. Let's face fact. But when somebody tells you, when we did Shilo, Bishop was saying, Aika, Allah, Allah. And you know how the man talks? His language is talking, he's not speaking in tongues, he's just saying those languages. And he said, I've not eaten. I remember one time I did not eat for like 30 days. They carried me almost dead so that I can eat. And you look at that and say, That church, I don't know what they are doing there. And they are fake people. Oops. See, some of you, I'm just praying for your destiny. Some of you are friends. It's not you that is doing it, it's your friend. You have to leave them. I used to have a company like that. Uni learning students, 400 level, because we read Matthew. We saw some revelation in Ephesians. We shared it in fellowship. They started calling us. All oh, those sisters, they will kill you, those sisters. He said, ah, that man said, yes, they were, ah, fire. And then they start honoring us. How? Oh, please pray for me. What's God saying? Ah, ah. Let me, I look at them and say, ah, ah. So we sat down. I will begin to negotiate ministry. Begin to negotiate. Say, Reverend George, he's stingy. Stingy, very stingy somebody. And then we will take every pastor, one after the other, and we begin to kill them. When sense came upon me, I left the man. I left the friendship. Because he's going to ruin me, not build me up. You can correct your mates, but know those who are not your mates. There is grace mates. There is age mates. I may not be older than you, more than three years, but we may not be grace mates. Are you with me? I've seen people call people older than them. Daddy James, if you see Papa, he will need ah, say, ah Papa it like now. Oh no, no, they are not mates. Reverend George and anybody in this church are not mates. Hebrew says for the greater, for the lesser, is blessed by the greater. Not by reason of age. It's by reason of spiritual contact and levels in the realm of the spirit. So how do you honor them? Number one, do not speak critically of them in public or in private. Number two, do not talk or play around on your cell phone while they are preaching. That's what some of you do. Some of you are on Snapchat now, Instagram. That's dishonorable. We are replying WhatsApp chat. Like you are the president of Nigeria. If you don't reply now, things will go bad. That's what you are doing. Some of you are tweeting. You are Donald Trump. You are tweeting. And your pastor is preaching. He labored in prayer. He labored in the word to give you God's mind. And you are here tweeting. Number four, take some more notes. You are telling them, I appreciate what you are saying. I appreciate the wisdom. I appreciate the knowledge. That's why I'm taking some more notes. Number five, open doors for them. When we say open doors for them, it does not mean opening door alone like this. Talk to your friends about your pastor. Talk to them about your church. Talk to them about what you are learning. That's how to honor him. Talk to them about what you are learning. Put it on your social media. We learned this. We did this. That's how to honor them. That's why you are giving cards now. You know, I know I was preaching this. <laughs> so go this week and honor me. <laughs> so give a friend. Talk to a friend. If you see a need in their life, meet it. I know people who, who even laugh about pastors. See his shoe and his preaching sources. Buy shoe now. Can't you give him shoe? When you see a need, what do you do? You meet it. I did that years ago when I never, I knew I was going to enter ministry, but I was not even thinking of entering ministry straight. I discovered that my pastor, every time when I was serving, he will wear shoe, official formal shoe, even when he's wearing jeans. And I was thinking, ah, there's something called casuals. Huh? My baby will have everything. You just, you know, now, you know, he has a way of sleeping on the shoe. I didn't just look cacked. I said, ah. Every time. So instead of joking, I carried the money and I bought him a shoe. That man prayed for me. 
He prayed for me. He said, this thing, ha! Because I asked him, I said, where is the most expensive shop in this town? Some of you kept money after service here. That was the only thing I used my money to. I bought a shoe of, I can say it now. I bought a shoe of 18K. That was nine years ago. So you will know how much it was now. I gave it to him. I nailed down. And the man looked at him. He wore it. It was not his size. I said, don't worry. I'll take it back. I returned. I gave him. The man looked at me. Say, kneel down. Touch my leg. Touch my head. Say, you will never go without shoes of honor in your life. <laughs> See that prayer? If I don't buy shoes in the next three years, I am ultimately fine. I don't even buy shoes. That's it. That's it. Of honor. My God. If I had laughed and did nothing, I would get nothing. I spent more than 18K after then. 18K is not money. But it was a seed. And there was a result. I mean, those who know me know. Those who know me know. There are some, I don't even know. My wife looked at me and said, Wale, it's a poach. I said, it's not me. It's the, it's the seed. It's not my problem. There are things you do that will open your future for you. Because you honor the anointing, not the man, the anointing. Do I look poor to you? No, I'm asking. So some of us can preach this kind of message. So that you will not think I'm trying to get money from you. But you will not look at our ministers and say, see how the trouser is. Buy him one, stupid person. He's always wearing that shoe. Change it. Change any need you see. Meet it. It doesn't have to be expensive. Meet it. Recognize them on their birthdays. Don't come. Minister Ale! <laughs> For everybody, we are coming. <laughs> you know some people are thinking like that. And then they will come and sit down in his house. And then they will hit. And then they will hug him. And then they will go. They have done it for me again and again in this church. My wife will cook. They will come. Including leaders. They will come. Ah, ah. Okay, sorry, sorry. They have begged me. They have begged me. They have begged me. No worries. You know, I just say it. I say it. I will say more. Okay, let me continue with the message. And they will come. And sweet hearts. They will eat. And then I will be thinking, okay. Okay. And then they will say, okay, sir. And then first one we go, I say, maybe they distributed the thing for one person. And then I will now see off the last person. And then I will go home and I will say, my wife said, eh. the last one that we did, nothing, nothing. From all of them, nothing. In this church, nothing, all of them. Nothing. Eh. See, <laughs> When I was angry, God said, wait. He told me, say, wait now. He said, wait. <laughs> you know what happened? Reverend George now did birthday. <laughs> My father in the Lord. <laughs> so PFM now went on stage with Mr. Raphael. See, if you have gifts, you can bring it now to Reverend George. <laughs> God said, wait. Just look at it. Look, it's not you. It is a generation. Just look at them. I say, it's Baba now. Nobody, nobody. Shame on all of you in this church. Nobody. Am I lying, sir? Answer! No. Reverend George. And then when he was declaring on 31st, you were shouting, Amen. Hey, hey, Amen! Is, is that the way it works? Oh, no. He said, don't let them bring it off stage. God said, he should not say that. <laughs> they should bring it down. Oh, Nigbe Kakawa, we are Oh, Nigbe Kakawa. You know what you say? You say it does not need anything. I agree with you, it's true. It does not. I go to his room, I know him, I know he has money, he has wealth, yes. So you are not giving him because you want to help him. You are giving him because you want to help you. And because you are showing that you appreciate what he's doing in your life. That's why you do what you do. And when we sow seeds to their life, let me now tell you this. It is not money that you get back. When you sow seeds to the life of a man of God, what you get back is grace. 
It is that grace that now multiplies whatever it is you lay your hands upon. And then you see prosperity. Do you understand that principle? Number seven, honor government officials. Number eight, honor police and military. <laughs> time is going. The time has gone. Government official, Romans 13, 2, 13, 1 to 2. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that be of God. Listen to this. There was a time I used to just go around, abuse Buhari, abuse everybody on social media and all of that. But right now, a people deserve the leaders they have. That's it. And after four years, we will all have our say again. We will go and vote. And if you sit at home and you don't vote, those who vote will be counted. And then you will be complaining again. So, there is, see, we can shout from now till tomorrow. If Buhari does not die, he's going to spend four years. And he's not going to die the way I look at him. So, it's another four years. So, whatever you say will not change anything. But when four years come, they will come again. And then you will vote. That is why you exercise your power. But you need to honor them. He can't come here now, like I said, and I will sit down. I will stand up. I may not feel him, but I will stand up. I'm honoring the position. I'm not honoring him. When a minister comes, and he's a guest minister, and he comes into the church... When we rise, we honor the position and the grace upon him. We are not honoring him. He's more, he's clay. He's the God he carries. Number eight, honor police and military. That is difficult for Nigerians. Very difficult. Because those guys will stop you on your phone, check your phone, check your, they are just doing anything. But because they are barbaric ones, does not mean they are not good ones. I've met a few good ones. I've met a few born again believers who are in the force. And we must pray for them. We must love to pray for them. Even the ones who want to collect bribe, if you have given him, he's poor. That's why he's asking you. That's the truth. And then number nine, honor your children. You honor your children by raising them in the fear of the Lord, not by cursing them. Oh, Mali, near oh, Mali. This one cannot be my child. Because you are trained that way, it does not mean that's the way you should train your children. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 4, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Show them affection. Spend quality time with them. Speak words of affirmation to them. Make them a priority in your life. And I love this five, fifth one. Discipline them. That's why those who are my children, they know I discipline them, both spiritual and natural give it to you when it is. No time. <laughs> no time. They know. I give you, I give you, you may not laugh with me, you may not greet me in months, even in years, but what we know to do that is right, we will do, we will continue to do, we are not PDP and Nigerian politicians, we will never change, changing parties, we know the ways of God and we stick with this. Praise God. I am not your honeymoon. I am your teacher. You know honeymoon? <laughs> Even when the girl fat, he say, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> nothing you do. It's nice. On the morning. Yeah. And that's why we try to, so you must also do what? Model the road to them. And finally, honor others before yourself. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 10, this is the final principle. This is how to stay on the table with the king. This is how to dwell and sit on his table. Say, honor one another above yourself. Honoring others is not always about the position, but it's about working in love toward everybody. Jesus said that we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength. And we are also supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mark 12, 30 to 31. When you honor others before you, you put them in every situation, you will show the world the love of God. And you will be a living testimony of what Jesus' love can do. This can be a real test. But I assure you that if you stick with it, it can also make you an example of the light and of the source in the world. God is calling us, every one of us, to an accountable life. He's calling us to complete honesty. He's calling us to be real before him and before men. He wants us to be honorable to each other. Don't say, I speak, I spoke. There's another lie that people like. I spoke. MG, 
I spoke in tongues six hours yesterday. So that MG can feel bad. Lie. You wrong, you wrong, you wrong, you wrong. The kind of lie that I hate most is the lie that they did not ask you. You just started lying. That one is a demonic possession. You just sat and say, ah, did I not tell you my dad bought a car yesterday? Nobody ask you. Okay, if I ask you, where do you stay? I say, ah, we stay in Lekki. And you know it's Jewish Akka that your house is. The second one of your neighbor is in Korodu. You know. But you say it's Lekki. You know, I was one that asked you. But I just stay on my own, JJ. And I say, eh, you know that when daddy finished his house in Banana Island, we now, and I say, don't like that way again. He now moved to Lekki. Stupid lie. How can somebody leave Banana Island and go to Lekki? You know, stupid lies. People just lie. That's the money possession. Say, you know, they admitted me for mercy. But I just did not want to spend eight years in school. So I said they should give me physiotherapy. It's a lie. You roll, you roll, you roll. Be real. Talk truth. Stop saying nonsense. If you're afraid of your future, I say, come remember, tell people I'm afraid, but I'm, I'm sure God will do it. No, say, I have a father, I have an uncle in the USA, Kansas, the Elliot, Kansas, they say, I should come. And then we'll see seven years sometime, you'll be running away. You know, many core members cannot. I tell you this under God. It's the truth. I've seen it. After they leave service here, many of them get out of social media. They stop operating their social media account. Instagram, Facebook, just leave it. Why? Because the life they created in their mouth, there are no pictures to back it up again. To market it. So they just calm down. So just live a low-key life. Be simple. See, this is how I am. Oh. My dad, is, he drives a bicycle in our village. And then my mom too. But I know I will take them out of the village one day. In the name of Jesus. That's how that's being real. Stop saying, hey, if she runs in Niger, so mama gets in Abia. Abia. Stop, stop. Shut up. Shut up. Who ask you? Stop lying. Honesty, integrity is the hallmark of the Christian faith. Let your yes be yes. Are you coming to Riazal? Your HOD asks you, no. Let her die if you want to die, but I'm not coming. I have a place to go and we'll see what the Lord will do. Shut up. Will you come to fellowship? <laughs> Listen. If I can connect from that place in the park, I'll be there. So when you have opened the door for lie. So when I ask you, and we didn't see I did not connect. Look at your neighbor and say, stop lying. Tell the pastors to her. Somebody. <laughs> In a funny way, I think I'll hand this. In a funny way. Someone in my workplace used to say, when somebody comes, and the person will lie, 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 a man of God, he will lie, lie, lie. And the person will come say, ah, if you don't pay my for one more jaw. Ah, if you don't pay for one more jaw. You know what that means? Leave lying to church members, pastor. Leave, church, leave lying to church members. Stop lying. Tell your neighbor, leave lying. Leave lying. Leave lying. To the devil and his cosmate. Live lying. Start saying the truth. Do what's right. Do it because it's right. Then do it right.